Hello everyone, my name is Grant Trader and I'll be presenting on how we used cloud computing to standardize and integrate address data to support South African disaster risk management. In this presentation, I'll be covering our motivation behind doing the project, uh, basic concepts related to cloud extraction, transformation and loading or ETL, the cloud platform provider that we ended up selecting for the project, an explanation of the standard we used in this project, uh, data we used in development and testing of our tool, and then finally a description of the workings of our ETL tool and the results we obtained from it. As a developing nation, South Africa is noted to be vulnerable to the adverse effects of disasters. As such, we've uh, implemented a disaster risk management system in which the planning and coordination is performed at the provincial level, while execution of plans and direct responses are handled by local and municipal government. Address data forms a major part of this as a method for identifying people either at risk or affected by a disaster. The issue is that addresses in South Africa are assigned by the different local governments and each has their own unique uh, data model. However, they need to be used in conjunction with each other by provincial governments. And there is no uniform standard being implemented. So in response to this, we decided to construct a tool that would integrate addresses by transforming them to a standard format. And we wanted to use cloud computing to expedite this process. Cloud computing involves the use of off-site computing resources in a distributed computing network. And the benefits of cloud to disaster management are that it's resistant to disasters due to its dispersed nature. So uh, if one data center is affected by a disaster, all data and processes can be transferred to another data center outside of the area of influence. It also helps by centralizing access to the data. Um, through the internet, anyone can access the computer network, the data network, wherever they are, and the data network is consistent for all users. And also it can utilize elasticity to adjust the assignment of computer resources based on need. And this can be useful if one area is dealing with a disaster and thus gets uh, more resources allocated to them. ETL is a process used in cloud computing to acquire, process and transfer data and is used in integration, for instance, in the case of this project. For this study, we didn't have the funds or expertise to develop our own cloud network. Similarly, South African disaster risk management is noted by literature to be underfunded, so a good commercial cloud provider is important. Ideally, it should have activity in and around South Africa, effective managed cloud services, and an acceptable price range for those services. Gartner's magic quadrant, displayed on the right, is from an industry provider review by the company of the same name and gave us a short list of the three leading cloud providers, Amazon Web Services or AWS, Microsoft Azure or Azure, and Google Pl Cloud Platform or GCP. These three distinguish themselves for good service level agreements available in the countries they have data centers in, and all have their own advantages and disadvantages, which will be covered next. AWS has a wide array of services, um, so including AWS S3 for st file storage, AWS Athena for serverless databasing, and I'll cover the benefits of serverlessness later on, and AWS Glue for ETL processes. AWS has data centers in Africa in Cape Town, and I believe they have the greatest presence in the country, uh, three data centers in Cape Town. Next is Microsoft Azure, 
and they have Azure Data Factory, which is a service that covers ETL, databasing, and analysis. And they also have uh, Azure Files for data storage. They have one data center in Cape Town in South Africa, and they have another one planned for uh, Johannesburg, which will open next year. Finally, we have Google Cloud Platform, or GCP. And they have several different ETL services for specific ETL procedures. And these include Cloud Data Fusion, Data Flow, and Data Proc. And then they also have storage via Google Cloud Storage. The issue with this provider is they have no data centers in South Africa. They do have edge computing nodes, so the network can be accessed. But for larger volumes of data analysis, it would be difficult, slow, and cost ineffective to use GCP. According to the Thousand Eyes Cloud Performance Benchmark, all of the providers we assessed gave comparable connection speeds and qualities to Africa. This left us with only pricing to use to distinguish the three. And we used the assumption of a hypothetical scenario where one gigabyte was entered into the system, processed, and then stored for a month. And this ended up being similar to what we tested the system with. Uh, and our end data set was 1046 megabytes, just more than a gigabyte. As you can see in the table, um, AWS is the cheapest at 11 cents. Uh, Azure is next at 13 cents and GCP is at 18 cents in US dollars. Therefore, we decided to move on with AWS as our chosen cloud platform. For this project, we decided to use the South African National Standard or SANS 1883 data model. Uh, this was created by the South African Bureau of Standards or SABS and it's necessary to permit integration of the heterogeneous data models of the various municipal uh, address data providers by converting them all to a single uniform model. Uh, this model is used by the South African Post Office, among others, but it's not universally implemented. There are two parts of interest uh, to the model. There is part one, 1883-1, which covers data elements and formats, including the various classes of address, like streets or building addresses. And 1883-2 deals with the electronic exchange of address data based on ISO 19160-1, uh, the 2015 international standard, and it involves things such as the computer data types. And it's mandatory for every address, no matter what class it is, to have two elements. One is an, an, um, an ambiguous identifier of that location, the other is a regional identifier. So for instance, in street addresses, the unambiguous identifier is the street name. And uh, the regional identifier is the place name, referring to the specific area that street is in. Something like a landmark address, the identifier might be its name, um, for example, town hall. And the regional identifier would be the town to which that town hall belongs. And a successfully transformed address should possess both of these mandatory elements. We got our address data to, with which we developed and tested the tool from two major municipalities, both in the uh, province of Gauteng both of them with their own unique data models for addresses. And so both of them would need to be integrated for the Gauteng disaster management system to process them. And uh, we used 674,061 addresses from the city of Twane in the north 
and the smaller but more densely populated city of Johannesburg in the south provided us with 945,633 addresses. And now these addresses weren't all joined together in single data sets. Uh, we actually got multiple files from each provider. Um, city of Johannesburg was the worst in terms of this, where we had to join data from the street center line, which gave the street names and uh, street types, the actual street addresses, which would give us the street numbers, the properties, which would give us the place name or a code for the place name, and the township, which would give us the actual name of the place. Now, with the data collected and an understanding of which standard we needed to use, I uh, started to construct the tool itself. And we used four cloud services from AWS, our uh, final cloud platform. And these were S3, which we used for file storage, uh, creating a data lake of data pre-processing. Then we uploaded that data into an AWS Athena serverless database. And um, as I said earlier, serverless is important. And the reason for that is it utilizes the distributed nature of cloud computing. Uh, Athena databases aren't stored in single locations. They're distributed over multiple nodes in the network. From there, we used AWS Glue ETL service to uh, unify the data, process it, and then save it, save the results into a single table in the Athena database. And it would also provide some reports, which would be stored and managed by AWS CloudWatch service. Now within the AWS Glue ETL job, uh, a couple of functions were performed. First of all, we used what is called a crawler to extract the data from the S3 store, our data lake, and put it into the Athena data warehouse, a sort of repository of the data before it's processed. Then uh, we would use a job in AWS Glue. And this was, this used, um, scripts, which I'll show later, to verify the data, remove invalid records, and then transform the data to the SANS 1883-2 uh, standard model. And then it would save the data into another Athena database for our answers and produce CloudWatch reports, which would be sent to the user. The analytical functions of the tool are performed within AWS Glue jobs, making use of the PySpark scripting language. And this is a combination of Python, which defines the code architecture, and Apache Spark, which extends it to include distributed data frames that operate on multiple cloud network nodes at once. Uh, results at the end of the uh, running of the tool were 100% successful, but that's more to do with the quality of the data we received from the municipalities. Um, the completeness of that data has a great effect on the success of our tool. Overall, the study has shown that it is feasible to integrate and standardize address data using cloud ETL tools. The cloud services, when accessible, add significant efficiency to transformation and mapping processes. And the AWS infrastructure was simple enough for me to use and uh, effective use of the pay per use model allowed us to make significant cost savings as well. Future studies, we intend to focus on expanding to other municipalities and other municipal address models. And we might also transfer the tool to another cloud provider. Thank you so much for joining us. I uh, hope you enjoyed it.